All right, so what's going on, guys? So I did make a small purchase during this pandemic. I finally picked up my first pickup truck. It is a 2013 Ford F-150 um, Lariat. It's ruby red. Like, as you can probably tell, it is the crew cab. Like, and so far, I've had it for a couple of weeks now. I'm actually really enjoying it. Now, this is my first truck. But like I said, so far, I am enjoying the ownership experience. Um, just a couple things, like if you don't know if you're thinking about getting a truck, is especially compared to my Fusion, is obviously the first big thing is just space. There's a ton more space in here. The guy who actually sold me the truck, the salesman, was actually about 6'3", and he could fit in the back of this thing behind me with no problem. And I'm not a small guy, and the guy could sit behind me comfortably. And of course, in addition to having the interior space, having a bed has just come in handy so many times already just in the last couple weeks. I know with the Fusion, I've done a lot. You can see I've hauled parts from the junkyard, just put them in the trunk. Um, that rack I built, which is those eight foot two by fours, um, I actually ran through the trunk, through the dash. Um, I did the same thing with, we actually got a, uh, a Skyline GTS right here. I'm not sure it's gonna pick up in the camera. I'm starting to see more and more like Skylines and import cars around Richmond. So that's definitely a good sign. Maybe Virginia's car scene might actually be something here soon. Cause I know for a long time, it was just Civics with fart cans on it. Not that I have a problem with Civics, but it's the whole fart can thing. Um, anyway, you know, I've hauled all that stuff, like all those beams and stuff in the Fusion. And of course it just made things a lot more difficult. Um, so of course when I go to buy insulation, you can only fit but so much, so you end up making a couple trips. And this thing can kind of do it all in one, in one, in one trip, of course, with having a bed. In addition, when I went to initially pick up the Galant and the Eclipse, actually, you know, first off, big shout outs to Trey, but it is kind of inconvenient having to wait on somebody else or having to rely on somebody else, I should say, um, you know, because I didn't have anything to go tow it with. So it was like one thing, I, obviously I can go rent a U-Haul, but that's really an unnecessary expense. And like I said, it's really just inconvenient trying to line everything up, especially with, you know, even trying to buy um, those two cars. You know, some of the sellers, like they post things for sale, and but then they act like they don't want to sell it. So it's kind of hard to line all those things up. Like I said, fortunately, uh, Trey came through you know, the first time with the, you know, with his big Dodge, um, and the second time, of course, the, the CRV was putting in work when we went to get the Galant. But having this now, again, I can definitely, you know, be more dependent on myself. I mean, when it comes to it. And as far as the engine, I actually went ahead and went with a three and a half liter EcoBoost engine, um, and it was actually by mistake. Because funny enough, they had this thing listed on their website as an XLT with the five liter V8. And that's what I really wanted. I mean, I've heard, and of course I've heard how the V6 sounds. And I just, it's just really not appealing. It doesn't sound very good. And I was just all completely 100% against the EcoBoost until I drove it. This thing is very quiet from first off as, as an engine. It doesn't make a lot of noise. And I don't plan on putting an exhaust on this thing anyway, so I don't have to worry about listening to that exhaust. And as an added bonus, at low RPM, you can really hear those turbos swollen. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it in this video, but I'll try to put some sound clips in. And it, it really just brings out, like I said, the kid in you, when you can hear those turbos just whistling. Um, and it definitely makes me happy, again, I, that I got the EcoBoost. Like this thing, it, it pulls, it's supposed to get a little bit better gas mileage. Of course, that turbo spoiler is still kind of addictive. And the fact that this truck is pretty quick. Actually, just driving around out for a cruise in this thing, and I ran across just a couple rides. This is like a, a Scion, a TC. And he was the guy was doing like one wheel peels at the light, and uh, an Integra, an old Integra that didn't have a hood on it, it was turbo, like with the exhaust coming out the top, um, and a light. And I ran into him in a light and decided I'd just you know make them reconsider their car choices. You know, I decided to see what this thing had, and I easily, easily went past these guys. Now, I understand they probably had traction problems. I wasn't worried about that. This thing took off and went. Um, downside, the transmission is kind of slow. And this, again, this being the older one, it's like, the, I guess, the first gen EcoBoost um, and the engine that's the transmission that came with it. The transmission does shift kind of slow, even when you're doing it manually. But for all in all, I think it's a, a good compromise. Now, of course, right now what's going on you know at the time of this video when it was like we're, we're having to deal with the covid thing and the car dealerships are pulling out every trick in the book to try to get you to buy a car it's like you know what we'll have no payments for six months we'll pay your court dues your late child support payments whatever just come in our dealership and buy a car and it must be working 
because I've seen a ton of new Nissans and stuff like that kind of floating around here, you know, with 30 day tags on. Because, of course, DMVs are closed. So it must be working. But one thing to consider about that, regardless of how big, good the deal is, what you really need to be looking at, of course, is out the door payment. And like, how much overall are you going to be spending? So if you're buying, you know, a Sentra, but, and you have no payments for six months, but you're putting yourself, you know, $25,000 in debt, did you really get a good deal? Especially on those cars that are mass produced and are going to drop like crazy, you know, as far as um, appreciate, depreciation. In my book, no. I always, I prefer to buy used. Now, I did buy the Fusion New, something like this, which is a pretty highly optioned used vehicle for the same price as like a base model new vehicle. And the out-the-door price on this was great. Like I said, they had it listed as an XLT, which is lower model, if you're not familiar with how Fords work. This dude is always up here. Um which is a lower model and then ironically enough is when the the finance guy came out he went to pull up the kelly blue book he was telling me a lot of prices are right around kelly blue book because of course they always try to sneak these extra fees in here it's like okay so we're listing a car for this price but now that you're sitting here i'm going to say you know this the price that i'm going to be able to offer it to you is like four gram or uh, it's like four grand more than what we listed it as you know because some bs reasons and like first anytime that happens just stop them right there ask them to explain it if you don't like what you hear do like i did get up and leave and then you know come to find out but as soon as i got in my car i got in my car was ready to leave and the guys come running out the door and say hey if i can give it to you for this price will you take it that's how you get a good deal but he went to look at the kelly blue book after i disagreed with what he had told me as far as their prices being fair and he used his own ad now, i didn't say anything about it being a lariat when it was listed as an xlt at this point so he was in he goes in the kelly blue book he puts in all the information to try to prove me wrong and he puts his truck in as a XLT and comes up with an even lower price. So then thus proving my point. It's like you got this thing listed. I mean, it was still listed as a good price. I mean, you're looking at that 20 grand out the door um, for again, and it's got the it's got navigation, heated seats, uh, heating cool seats, four-wheel drive, got the trailer, says the tow package on it. Um, so again, pretty good deal. All those things you want to pay attention to though, and I said I would definitely advise the gets, like I said, buying a new car. Um, right now because a lot of people are buying the same car that's just going to kill the value of the car later so you think you're getting a good deal now because you're not having to make payments for a few months but it's, it's going it's going to hurt you down the road when you realize that you still got six years to pay for this thing and it's only worth a third of what it costs you so just be careful think about that guys that's kind of really the only thing i wanted to talk about i'm really excited about the new truck um it rides smooth it has a lot of body rolling especially compared to the fusion but so far, like I said, it's already come in handy. Being able to pick up two by fours and do things for the house um, and be able to fit them in here, make one trip, and I have to make a bunch of trips. Um, of course, I'm still keeping my Fusion. That's my daily, uh, most of the time. That's what I take to work because um, it does get better gas mileage. But so far, I'm loving the truck life. And all of a sudden, after getting this thing, the Raptor makes so much more sense. Because I don't know if you can hear that. I'm taking off. But you can hear it spooling. I hope you guys caught that. It is a beautiful sound. Like I said, so this definitely makes me understand the Raptor now. I was not an advocate for a V6 and a Raptor, but this makes it make more sense. I get it now. I get why they went with that platform. Um, and again, if you're thinking about getting the EcoBoost, but you're unsure, as long as you don't plan on putting the exhaust on or anything like that, definitely go with the EcoBoost. Like the EcoBoost is definitely a good choice. So if you're on the fence about it, I'm happy with it so far. That's what I can tell you guys with all that i have done a few mods to it i've got weather tech floor liners in here again i got them on facebook marketplace do not buy these things new you can find them pretty easily for any vehicle and use car parts to depreciate faster than the cars themselves so the weather techs are new were like 250 and i picked these up for like 110 dollars so just take your time look for the stuff used um got a shorty antenna like i said the weather techs and i'll be getting this thing tinted soon because the front windows aren't tinted so that's really it guys Hope you guys like the truck. I will be doing a few things to it. I don't think I'm gonna go too crazy. Like, but we'll see what kind of comes in time. Remember to subscribe to my channel, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll catch you guys later.